I swear I've never played a Native American flute before and I just picked this up and came up with a little tune. And the reason why I'm so excited is because this just came out of my 3D printer. I downloaded it from Thingiverse and printed it with wood filament and stained it and I'm really happy with the way it came out and how it sounds. So the reason why I'm doing this video is one to show you the technique on how I put this together and did a little bit of the post processing but also because I had to bring it into Fusion 360 in order to modify it because when I printed it I wanted it to print upright instead of flat and it just wouldn't fit within my build envelope upright so I brought it into Fusion and split it in a way that would allow me to easily assemble it again so uh, here you go here's the video and along with that I've got a few uh, tips and tricks that I kind of just came up with along the way I came across this Native American style flute by Thingiverse user 3D-DS and decided I would try to print it. However, there was a problem in that the main flute body was split into two parts, the taller one being just a little too tall for my printer at 204 millimeters. So I decided to go ahead and bring this into Fusion 360 as a mesh and try to split it. Before I did that, I decided to go ahead and get rid of a lot of these triangles in order to lighten the load on my computer and I approached this by applying a bit of a hack. I extruded two cylinders, each just a little bit bigger than the flute and then use the boolean operation to cut out just a small portion basically applying sort of a surfacing operation here to smooth it out then i came in with an offset plane and used that to split the body i created a sketch on one of the bodies and extruded a circle inwards and did the same thing on the other body except i extruded it outwards essentially creating a male and female connector that made it together nicely as you can see this now fits easily into my build envelope that was just a quick overview of my approach. I will go through a step-by-step -step tutorial later in this video if you're interested. Uh, but now let's go ahead and take a look at the post process that I did. I printed this using wood filament from Saint Smart. Now an issue with wood filament that you'll have is that there tends to be quite a bit of stringing that takes place. So I needed a way to clean this up. To do that, I cut a couple strips of foam tape, which I wrapped around a dowel, then took a piece of fine sandpaper and wrapped that around the foam tape. I used that to go ahead and clean up the inside of the flute and get rid of all the stringing. I used a small file to clean up the finger holes, then took the flute outside and sanded the exterior. Now to assemble this, I just used some CA glue to go ahead and glue the different sections together, making sure to go ahead and line them up. And then I clamped it all together uh, for about two hours as I let the glue dry. Wood filament claims it can be stained just like regular wood, so I decided to test this out with some Minwax stain. I applied it using just an old white t-shirt that I had cut up, giving it three coats about 10 to 20 minutes apart. I made sure to let this dry fully for 24 hours. Okay, let's now take a look at the full step-by-step -step Fusion 360 tutorial. We'll begin by bringing in the STL file. So we'll go to insert, insert mesh, and I'm here in my downloads folder and here are the four files we need for the flute and the one that's gonna give us trouble or the one that's too big to fit in our build plate is this one that I renamed flute back so we'll go ahead and double click on that to bring it in and I'll turn on my origin and zoom out so we can see it and I'll go to a front view and the first thing I'll do is use this little widget to go ahead and turn this 90 degrees and then I'm going to uh, click on center here in this dialog box. And what that'll do is it'll actually position the flute right in the center um, with the origin there lining up with my origin, which will make it a lot easier in creating other sketches and geometry. So I'll click OK. And next I'll go to create sketch and choose this XY plane to start drawing some circles. And we're going to go ahead and make some circles here. Our first circle will be in the center, which will extrude a cylinder um, to go ahead and just uh, uh, create a, what I'll call more of a surfacing um, operation here, where we're just gonna use that to cut a little bit off the inside, just to smooth it out and get rid of all these triangles. So it'll be small enough where it won't really make a difference in the model when we print it, but it should make the model easier to work with. 
So, all right, we'll go to a top view. I'll hit C for a circle. And as I start creating the circle, you'll see if I bring this up to the top here, that's giving me a dimension about 15.739. So I'll make it just a slight bit bigger at 15.8. So just a really small fraction of a millimeter bigger than that. And then I'll do the same thing and grab another circle right from the origin and to the top. And this one, I'll go ahead and make it 23.2. Uh, and then I'll make a third circle, and the dimension for this circle isn't really critical. It just has to be bigger than everything. So I'll make that at 30 millimeters. I'll click Stop Sketch, and we'll go ahead and now create some extrusions. So I'll get rid of the origin here and uh, untoggle body so I can see my sketch. I'll select that inner circle, hit E for Extrude. Um, start extruding this up in order to see I'll have to bring bodies back. And I'm going to change the direction from one side to symmetric. And I'm going to have it operation as new body. And then I'll just start extruding it up until I see it poke through the other side. And because it's symmetric, I'll see it poke through the bottom as well. So I'll click OK for that. And now I'm going to go back in and grab that uh, other circle, which is the outer parameter here. So I'll click on that and choose E for extrude. Uh, bring bodies back again. Go ahead and choose symmetric. And do the same thing. I'm going to extrude this up just so that it extends past our uh, our STL model click OK and all right now that I have my two cylinders there this body one and body two um, what I'm gonna need to do is use those to uh, you know to go ahead and cut this model so I'm gonna do a boolean operation but before I can do anything to this model I have to actually convert it into uh, an actual a B wrap um, because right now it's just a surface geometry and it's not gonna let me do anything um, besides select it so to do that I'm gonna first need to stop design capture history um, so you'll notice if I click here uh, and there I don't have an option to convert to B wrap but if I go here under my browser into my project name right now there's no name so it's just called unsaved but once you save it, you'll get it. Your name will appear here. If I go that, go down to um, Do Not Capture Design History, uh, click Continue, and now I can go ahead and click on my model and choose, uh, or I'll see the option for uh, Mesh to rewrap, B wrap. So I'll go ahead and choose that and click OK. It's going to give me a warning saying you've got way too many facets here, close to 30,000. Um, it's not really recommended because Fusion likes to be under 10,000. But I'm going to click OK anyway because I've tried it and it worked. Now, it may just be that my machine is, is capable of uh, doing the processing uh, for this. If you're having issues, you may want to take a look at my tutorial I created on modifying a uh, high poly STL file. And that'll show you how you can bring this model into the mesh uh, environment, reduce it in size, and then bring it back to go ahead and modify. So uh, one thing I'll also point out, in order to do that, you'll wanna make sure to go under preference here. So click on the little triangle preference and make sure that under preview that you have the mesh workspace checked. So click OK, come back, and as you can see, it went ahead and, and changed it to uh, B wrap. So now I can actually select it and, and modify the geometry here. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to select one of these triangles and hit delete. And notice what happens when I do that. Uh, Fusion will actually heal this. It'll um, pick up that this is an entirely flat surface and it'll delete all the other triangles and make it nice and even. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the bottom. So I'll go ahead and choose one of these triangles here and hit delete. And just have Fusion go ahead and clean that up for me. So, okay, now that we have that, um, we can go ahead and bring in our body. So we'll start with our first um, Actually, let's go ahead and name this so that it's we'll remember um, It'll be easier to work with and not just have body one two and three. We'll call this uh, flute Because that's this is actually our model that was converted over And we'll bring in that body one which is that inner cylinder and I'm gonna go ahead and go to modify combine for my target body, I'm gonna choose um, my flute and then for my tool body here I'm gonna choose my inner cylinder and then I'm gonna click OK and make sure you have the operation as cut for that and you'll see that it went ahead and got rid of all those triangles so 
let's get rid of this uh, sketch here. So I'll hit undo to show what it was prior. See all those triangles in the middle there? And then I'll bring it back. And now you can see how smooth that looks. So let's do the same thing for the outside. I'll go ahead and go to modify, combine. Actually, let's bring in this body first. This is our outer cylinder. Um, modify, combine, choose my target body. And then go ahead and choose my tool body, which is the outside cylinder have the operation as cut and then you'll see it turn pink uh, that it's showing it's going to cut and then i'll click ok and the reason i made these bodies and then use the boolean operation instead of just choosing the uh my uh, circle and doing an extrude cut is because this tends to be easier on your system if you try to um, just select that for example that outer circle extrude it as a cut uh, you'll notice it's going to be really laggy and have a hard time trying to um, create that calculation. This way, it just works smoother. So now that got rid of all you know all those triangles on the inside and the outside, and this should make it easier to work with. I mean, we still have all these little guys here, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. We'll leave that in place. All right. So now that we have um, we have our model here, we can go ahead and slice it. Um, to be able to uh, get it so that it fits to our printer. So to do that, we'll go ahead and make an offset plane and I'll reference the top here. And I want that plane to be, um, well, I've got a few options here. So um, as I'm thinking about this, you know, I can go ahead and sort of cut it right in the middle, but I don't really want to have it cut between finger holes. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut it after this last finger hole here. So I'll just do a negative 55 millimeters off the top, enter that in and hit OK. Now I'll go to modify and go down to split body, choose my model and my splitting tool is going to be that offset plane I just created. So I'm going to select that and then just click OK. And notice here it's going to now create two bodies. So once it does that calculation, it'll come here and, and give me two bodies um, so I'll have flute and then flute one and I'm gonna let's see this is our looks like our bottom part here so we'll go ahead and rename this as bottom and then we'll call this one our top okay so we'll Get rid of bottom for now and we'll just work on the top and what we'll do is we'll create a sketch on this surface so let's get rid of this construction plane um, go ahead and sketch here and i'm going to create a sketch from the center uh, to about the middle here so let's say 19.5 click ok and let's, I don't need to see that first sketch. So I'm gonna take uh, this plus this profile here, hit E for extrude, and I'm gonna come down uh, and I'll do uh, negative 10 millimeters there to do a cut. And that'll give me that cut. And so for the other part, the top, or I'll call it the bottom, I mean, we'll bring that into view. And let's go back into that sketch here. We'll look at it this way. And what I'll do here is, so this part that I extruded down, I want to, I want to have now sort of the male version of that. So these will, will snap into place. So to do that, I'll first offset this line in. So uh, we'll go to sketch offset and I'm going to go in a negative 0.1 millimeters just to leave me a little bit of a gap between those two um, surfaces so that they will uh, uh, slide in nicely and I'm going to take now this profile E4 extrude and we're going to go up so we'll do negative 10 in this case and that's going to be a join operation and I'll click OK. So now I have that bottom and that top and let's do a section analysis to see how those look together. So I'll go to inspect uh, down to section analysis, bring our origin here. 
I'll go ahead and choose that and click OK. And if I zoom in, I see exactly how those two are cut. And you can see we have that little gap in there um, that we made so that we should get a nice fit. Okay, so that does it. This uh, should now be able to fit in our print bed. So I'll get rid of analysis here and our origin. So if I go ahead and export this, I'll go to make 3D print. I'll choose this bottom portion. I'll send it to Simplify 3D so we can see how that looks compared to our print bed. Um, so that'll open up. I'm going to get rid of these last two here. Um, and there we go. So it, uh, we can see that it's definitely going to fit. Uh, now the dimension of our uh, Prusa is, what did we say that was? Um, it's 200 millimeters high. And if I click on this, I can see my Z. The dimension is 159.47, uh, so that's not going to have any problem fitting. So, all right, that's how you can go ahead and split a model and uh, in a way that you can go back and assemble it uh, later after printing. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, uh, don't forget to like it and subscribe for more content. Uh, plus, I'm always looking for new ideas for new content. So if you have something you'd like me to cover, uh, leave it in the comments below and I may end up doing a video on it. All right, guys, take care.